Hi, so I'm Reese. I'm an engineer on the domains team at Vizel, and I wanted to really kind of go over uh, use cache, what it unlocks, kind of how we got here, and why I'm excited about it. So going over the agenda, we're going to look at kind of the evolution of use cache in Next.js, the functionality that it unlocks, and then how you can kind of use use cache to make it hide away into the background and more of an implementation detail. So from the talk title, what is reactive state? Um, so it's kind of this concept of when you make a change, all of the people should see that change reflected without having to kind of encounter stale data. It's a common problem that kind of many apps that you have use. For example, how many times have you flipped a toggle on one browser tab, but the other browser tab that you have open doesn't reflect the changes that you just made? The scenario here kind of highlights it, but it might not be super common where you have two tabs open at the same time. But you can imagine you know, your teammates updating state at the same time, and the page doesn't reflect that state. Same thing, we're kind of leaving a comment and then not seeing that uh, reflected. On the front end, we have a lot of tools to solve this problem. We have the ability to listen to changes to data over WebSockets or SSE. And it's pretty fixable in that you set up a subscription on the client to the data that's changing and then reflect, refresh the state based on that. And we've seen more apps kind of adopt this over time. For example, one of our products, V0, when you send a message, it updates in real time across the browser clients. Um, it's a fair bit easier to kind of ship updates to spa-like apps as you can start a listener on the client. But whereas when you're server-side rendering your pages in either a distributed or a serverless setup, you don't have that persisted client to kind of start a connection. And along with that, um, you might be managing multiple cache locations, whether that be your data cache or your CDN cache. Um, it's a lot of state that you have to track. So kind of reactive state. And now, kind of my background, um, a lot of the experience that I have is building really high far, fast performing, high scale sites for Next.js. In the past few years, years I've helped build NextFaster, which is a demo e commerce site with over a million products and instant page navigations. Answer Overflow, a Next.js app that has over 2 million pages. And then Vesel Domains, which is a real time search for domain names. And so, kind of, what do all of these have in common? Well, they all make really heavy use of caching. And the reason they use caching so extensively is to get data close to the user. And so if caching is so great, then why aren't all the sites fast, and why don't we just cache everything so it loads instantly? Well, you have to count for all of the places the cache data is used to, in order to revalidate them, and also make sure that that data isn't stale. And so with NextFaster and OnthroFlow, while both of them are great at serving lots of pages, they're not super reactive to the changes that are made. And so kind of looking at why that is and how caching has evolved with the Next.js, uh, in Next.js, uh, starting with the pages router, you had two options for caching. The first one was either manually writing da data to Redis or some similar data store. This would be what you would use if you wanted to cache the results of a call uh, in between kind of deployments or keep it in memory. Uh, the other one would be writing pages to the ISR cache. And this would be done by adding get dynamic props or get static props along with specifying revalidate time. And you'd use that when you wanted to kind of serve pages from the edge cache or the CDN cache. So that's how you cache data from the pages router. But then invalidation was a much more painful story. You'd have to call a route handler and then figure out all of the places your data was used and then call revalidate for every single path that that data was used on. This meant you'd be doing a bunch of manual work to track all of the places that your data was being used, and then it was a calling revalidate. And so why did you have to call revalidate so many times? Well, from the perspective of the framework, the, uh, in the pages router, a route ma maps to a rendered page, but the framework didn't know what data went into rendering that page. In this case, post slash ID calls get content, get views, get users, but the framework doesn't know about that mapping and that data that the page depends on. All it knows is that the route maps the render page. So then it came along app router, and with app router, it introduced the concept of your framework understanding caching and providing primitives for you to use to cache data. It started with the kind of awkward teenagers of unstable cache and then an option for fetch caching. Uh, but that API was pretty clunky to use and fairly limited in its ability. For example, you weren't able to use the result of a call uh, with unstable cache to set cache tag based on it. And then pretty quickly evolved to use cache, which is a really nice interface which lets you cache both React components and data 
and it's the shared interface for the above. And so when kind of use cache was introduced and then the other caching primitives that XGS has, a question you might ask yourself is why is it introducing these primitives? Why does my framework care about how I cache data? And that kind of comes back to fine-grained reactivity and caching of data. So for a given route, it knows exactly what data makes up that route. And then the framework is able to respond with either like a cache stack header that then a kind of downstream cache is able to use uh, to do invalidate granular revalidation of changes. And so kind of from this diagram, we can see that for the path post ID, it calls get content, get views, get users again in order to render the page. But in this case, the page actually knows about the fact that those functions went into it. And not only does it know that those functions being called to, called to render that page, through cache tags, you're able to provide metadata about the returned results. And so it knows not, not only that the functions are called on that page, but also the returned data is that that page is dependent on specific data. And so kind of when you contrast that to pages route for doing validation, it's just one call to revalidate all of the places that data is used on. And not only is it just that one call to revalidate the pages, also if you're storing con uh, data in like a data cache, like for example, how you would use to store it in Redis, the, it's the same revalidate tag call to that location. And so because the framework handles the caching and tracking for you, it's able to handle this for you, rather than you having to do all this manual work to specify revalidate locations. And so if you kind of look at the APIs here of the traditional Redis cache to unstable cache to finally use cache, the DX wins are really clear on use cache. You don't have to add conditional logic to caching, do a function flow. Uh, and not only is it a nicer API for handling caching, it's unlocking more functionality while providing a nicer API that wasn't possible before in Pages Router. So that's kind of the background on why use cache was introduced and what, is what, is it, uh, what it unlocks. But how does it look like in practice and kind of how am I thinking about building with it? Here's where things I think get really cool is you're able to set up your code base in a way where you very rarely think about use cache. Instead, you're able to just write your code as normal and then you can keep your content fresh automatically by subscribing to changes. This is accomplished by localizing use cache to the places data is fetched, calling revalidate tag on data change, and then using narrow tags to just revalidate the data that changes. We're going to go over two examples. The first one's using convex, which is a database, and the next one is using a CMS. So first starting with convex. For those of you unfamiliar with convex, it's a database that's excellent at tracking the changes uh, to your data and broadcasting to subscribers when data changes. The kind of setup that I have for it is I created a wrapper function that starts a subscription on query changes, and then when a change comes in to that specific query, it goes a webhook to revalidate that tag. It's a small amount of one-time setup, and the benefit is I'm able to reuse that all throughout my application uh, to have up-to-date rent server-side rendered content. Let's dive into the code to see how this looks. So everywhere that I need to fetch data in my application, this is what it looks like. I pass the name of the function and the augs the wrapper function, get the result, and can use it as normal. I think what I love so much about this is that it's just kind of the standard, like, await that data, use the result. But with kind of putting use cache in the background and the implementation of this function, it's never stale, it's grandly cached, and you're getting the benefits of server-side rendering, and all you have to do is call your query function. So kind of a look at what that function looks like. Uh, it's got a few parts, breaking them down. Um, the first part is kind of the use cache, specifying that that function is going to be, the results of it are going to be cached. Then it creates a key, which is the hash of the function name and the args, and that's what we're going to be using to revalidate later on. Then it calls convex to get the, chain, get the results of the database query. This is kind of your standard database lookup. Um, and then after that, it sets up a subscriber to listen to the changes. For the purpose of this demo, the subscribe is one that I had to set up manually. There's like a world where providers kind of provide more APIs for exposing cache keys and things to cache on uh, with callbacks. And then finally, it sets a cache tag, and that's how we're able to revalidate it. And then we're using a cache life of weeks as we'll be handling the kind of revalidation of this data. And then finally, this is the callback function that gets called on data change. It's pretty simple, it's pretty straightforward where convex gives us that key back, of the, which is the hash of the function name and the arguments passed to it. And we pass that directly to revalidate tag in order to revalidate it um, on a notification of data change. 
So looking at kind of a demo of what this looks like uh, in practice, um, so this is without the using use cache and subscribing to date changes. Uh, you can see that when you add a message and then do a refresh, you can see that there's kind of a flash of in incorrect content. And so what's happening here is the server side page is rendering. It's showing the stale content. The client is then doing a fetch, and that's rendering the up-to-date content from the server. But there's a mismatch between them. And this is because the server side rendered content is out of sync. So then kind of like looking at the other setup, um, so this is calling revalidate on data change. And so when I add a message and do a refresh, you can see that there's no layout shift. There's no flash of stale content. It's just revalidating the changes. And so the kind of next example I wanted to walk through is hooking it up to a CMS. And so it's another example where you might have like a CMS and it's got author information and you have a function to get that author, author information. Uh, this function might be called on an overview of a list of posts, an individual blog page, or an author page. And it's the same thing where you provide a data function to get the data, you specify use cache, and then you return the results. And then the next step is, part is making the data live. Most CMSs provide webhooks on data change. So we're subscribing to a webhook from our CMS. And then if it's a change to the author details, we reval revalidate that tag. This could also be called from your database write path. In this case, it's showing how to integrate with an external service. So coming back to this example before of revalidating many pages, I think it really shows the kind of value in use cache and the Next.js caching system. With one revalidate call, you're able to invalidate all of the locations that data is used and the remote cache. I'm slightly asking, asking over for these demos the context of how revalidate gets, tag gets called, just because it varies a fair amount based on your data access and mutation patterns. The example of a CMS provider and integrating with your database should be both common, pretty common patterns that you can build from. The focus here is more so on what use cache and revalidate tag are able to unlock in keeping your routes rendering fresh data without having to set arbitrary expiration times. The last thing I want to do was run through some kind of additional scenarios that use cache uh, that you might run into of use cache, give you more items to add to your tool belt. Ideally, you have this beautiful caching setup with granular validation, but sometimes you might it's helpful to have fallback options. So here's an example of setting a cache tag to enterprise. This would be helpful if you needed to invalidate all enterprise customers' data, for example. Another one would be making sure that all data fetches related to a specific customer have the same ID. So that way, if you need to invalidate just that customer's data, you can do one call to invalidate everywhere. Uh, another kind of basic example, but it makes it, use cache makes it really easy to have different cache lives depending on how old your data is. So in this case, if my data is not changing often, I might want to use weeks as the cache time instead of hours, and I just specify that in cache life. Next.js also supports bringing your own cache handler. So if you kind of want more control over how caching happens in your app, uh, you're able to implement your own. And then lastly, I wanted to call out uh, kind of a difference between update tag and revalidate tag. So update tag gets called uh, from server actions, and it allows you to ensure the next request will be up-to-date content. Uh, so the difference between update tag and revalidate tag is revalidate tag does background revalidation. And so it's kind of still while revalidate. It's of still content for the first request, revalidates it, and then it returns the up-to-date content. Up -to -date, update tag forces kind of the next request to serve fresh up-to-date data. So that's kind of the uh, overview of kind of why use cache exists, what it unlocks, and then how revalidate tag allows you to make pages live. If you're interested to get the source code for the convex demo that kind of shows how I implement this in a more production app, here's a QR code you can scan to get those resources. Thank you so much.